All right. Hi, and welcome to Sustainability Smart Talks. Uh, so who am I? I'm Abakwe John Makarapa. Uh, people know me as AJ. If I were to describe myself, I would say I am a high-level academic. I've uh, graduated from some of the best universities, universities in the world. I got my master's in uh, electrical electronic engineering from University College London, which is number eight in the world. And I find myself as a doctoral researcher at Blackpool University, which is, number two, which is a top 10 university in the United Kingdom. Uh, my research focuses on wireless communications that uh, creates communication out of thin air. And that's a very attractive solution. That's what my research aims to do. I'm also a specialist educator at the East Midlands Institute of Technology, where I teach students in the field of electrical power networks, robotics, automation, mechatronics. So I have a interdisciplinary expertise in the field of systems engineering. I'm also the founder of a company I run in Botswana. Uh, it's called Arrow Industrial Engineering Solutions. And our motto is, go solar, go longer. I'm also the host of this podcast called Sustainably Smart Talks. So you can find us on uh, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and we have an Instagram page, but I just reserved the name so someone can run the formulator in the future. So my vision, why I started this podcast, it blends things that are very close to my heart, which is engineering, entrepreneurship, and ethics. So this is making a global impact by making sure that we can create infrastructure uh, that is also that's going to be catering to a better tomorrow. Entrepreneurship is at the heart of this because if you need an investment into these businesses, you have to be able to pitch to investors, founders, and we get the money to get that working. So my business so far has been able to win some grants. Uh, we have a website, arrowindustrialco.bw. It's been funded by Lafayette University. How I was able to get this podcast um, up and running is that um, Loughborough University has an incubator that is on the other side of campus, and they give you mentorship. Uh, they give me the podcast space that I'm able to use at the moment, the studio, and access to a lot of people that I wouldn't have uh, met if I wasn't uh, endeavoring in this. And I blend this all with the ethics, the right ethics, because I know that if you have the right partnerships that you start, we can make a better tomorrow. So the purpose of this was to bring a more human-centered focus to bridge parts where I find myself inter intersecting in, which is academia and industry. Academia because, as I've, I've mentioned, that yes, I've been to some of the best universities in the world. I, I run my own company, Aero Industrial Engineering Solutions. So the purpose is that we can bridge this by telling stories, because stories are accessible. Stories are able to be Translated, that's how we can comprehend information. In fact, how we got more information today was that our presenters come today and give us the take on sustainability. So why a podcast? Well, storytelling is powerful. Uh, podcast makes it accessible. Say that you are somewhere in Australia, Africa, North America, South America, you can access from wherever you go. So we can reach more people, reach more ears by having a platform that people could access. And it's a lot cheaper for you to get onto a podcast and see how to get that information. Um, YouTube, all you need is a stable internet connection and you can, you can stream the podcast that you have. Or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, those are 10 pounds a month. So that's a lot better than paying 9,000 pounds a year or international fees that you're paying 3,000 pounds a year to get the same information. So it's a lot more accessible for people in those areas that are a bit further away. And it can be, be replayed because we have a digital backup of that file. So that's why I started the podcast. And we made a global impact with this podcast. We've grown over to over 8,500 subscribers in just three months. And uh, we're showcasing the innovation across Africa, Europe, and UK. And we linked these to the sustainable development goals to show that we can make an impact with real-world innovation. 
just to show you, so we have an appreciation of what all the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are. Number one, no poverty. Two, zero hunger. Three, good health and well-being. These are very, very important uh, goals that we have. Four, quite education. Number five, gender equality. Number six, clean water and sanitation. Number seven, affordable and clean energy. And I work in that space myself. Decent work and economic growth. Industry, innovation, and infrastructure. So my company is actually focused on developing in rural areas. Uh, it's founded in Botswana and we're making an impact there to reduce inequalities, which is number 10, and make sustainable cities and communities. And that's how we need that with independence of clean energy. Number 12, responsible consumption of production. Number 13, climate action. 14, life below water. 15, life on land. Number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. And to achieve this all, the most important one, I think, is partnerships, number 17. So the theme of our podcast is that we try to hit most of these goals and with the blend of engineering, ethics, and academia, and industry. So our first episode, I, I bring a doctoral researcher who just defended his thesis. His name is uh, Dr. Kovic. He just defended his thesis, so he will get his PhD quite soon. Uh, we talk about the innovations of solar across the wall. So uh, Dr. Kovic himself, works for a company called First Solar in America, and they're working on something called thin film cadmium telluride, which is a way of creating solar panels that are gonna cost less, and they take a less time for you to manufacture them. If you do that, that means that normally your payback period for like solar panels when you saw them is like seven years, but now you can cut them in half. So we're also thinking about how can we research later to make sure that when we make these clean, affordable energy solutions, they're efficient, they don't cost us a lot of money, and they're sustainable. So we have a good 20 minute talk, 30 minute talk about it, and uh, I'm going to watch the first episode. As I said, my company, Aero Industrial, our motto is go slower, go longer. Because we know that if we have in, in our own energy sources, we can be independent, especially for where I'm from, Africa. So the theme is global stories, African roots. And then we bring into episode two. Uh, I bring on our, our Olympic sprinter. Um, so we have a special niche here with Alex Hedrick Wilson. He's a high level academic and is also a high level athlete. Um, yeah, he won a couple of medals last, last year for Tim GB running in the relays. But he's also a researcher in solar panels and how to make himself clean themselves because when there's dust in a solar panel, um, you can't get any energy from them. So it's found a way how to make sure that they can clean themselves, of course. So, is Africa held back? We're knowing that uh, it's the place with all the resources in the world, of course, but we find that ourselves as the poorest countries, poorest places in the world, of course. So we talk about in this episode how we can rebridge that to make sure there's sustainable funding in those areas that are most needed because we find that the West has a lot of the funding, um, so, but some things in life just have to firm it. And just know that we can now find a way how we can catch up and uh, play on words because he's a sprinter. So I'm sorry to watch this episode as well. Can Africa catch up? We have a very good conversation about how we can do that and make sure that the place where we get most of our resources is also reducing the priorities, hitting one of the SDGs, as Apple mentioned. One of the SDGs as well is our private education. So I, I know that um, not everyone can do a PhD, but some of us, uh, we know that all leaders here uh, come from academia. So I talked to... Uh, an academic that comes from India, who got a scholarship actually, he got on a prestigious scholarship to go to Imperial College London, but he came to Loughborough University because of the fees, the scholarship that was able to pay him better, because it's harder for us to get good education if we can't afford all this. I myself, personally, would have never been able to afford to go to University College London or Loughborough University if I was not on scholarships for the last 10 years. They funded me because, yeah, I'm one of the brightest minds in Botswana but he's also one of the brightest minds in India. But he found a way to make these applications. So in this episode, we talk about student life, what you require to get that funding for your PhD, or how to work, what kind of work ethics are required for you to become a high-level academic. And we talk about student life, budgeting, if you're single, if you're married. This is smart 
conversation. And number three, number four actually, um, we talk about um, good hygiene for Africa. So I bring on a high level academic as well, who is an entrepreneur. His name is uh, Chisimo Keke. He's been to actually six universities, coming from Nigeria, has been to France, now he's in the UK. Uh, he works on making green hydrogen. So green hydrogen is very good in the sense of making battery technology, uh, clean cooking solutions, and we see how we can improve other places like uh, a country that has the uh, most populous land and should be actually honestly the biggest economy because of how much oil and gas that they produce. And uh, we break down the topic in this, um, in this episode here. Here are more of the sustainable development goals as, as I showed in the previous slide, of course. And in episode five, so we have this food versus food argument, of course, that we know that uh, fossil fuels are a rich energy source, of course, but they are very dangerous to the planet, of course, they're causing a lot of harm. So this researcher here, her name is uh, Ashraf Nyako, she's also from Nigeria. Uh, so she's innovative for Greener Tomorrow and she, she's won awards at the Super Giant Biohub in London. Uh, so instead of now, we all need food for our survival, of course. So imagine now if we have um, corn, but we don't eat all parts of the stem. So there's gonna be some waste from the fact that we're gonna create some food, of course. So imagine now taking the stem, uh, the leaves, and then turning that into biodiesel, a rich source of fuel that could be better to make a second economy to turn waste into energy. Think about how we can still power up our cities because we're gonna need some diesel, but let's make some diesel now from a way sustainable source that we, cause, we can do with food and she works in chemistry. But not everyone is an academic, so I brought on this, uh, she here shows a PhD as well. Uh, her name is uh, Dr. Naomi Howard Brumlich. She's a specialist in food nutrition and she based on how we relate to science in our everyday lives, of course. And she's actually making nationwide impact. She just won a grant for her business, I think over 25,000 pounds recently from uh, uh, this is a Thomas White Loan Charity, and uh, she makes science accessible to all ages. It's not about the way that we go to school formally, it's about how can we make sure that people can still have the knowledge of science without necessarily having to, you know, pay those excessive fees of university, pay those excessive fees for private education, have it in a way that's uh, quite fun, messy in a way that you can understand science in a sustainable way. As I said, I, I teach in the field of robotics, automation, and microtronics. We know that we have to be more efficient in the way we do things, of course. So I, I bring on this researcher working in, in human-robot collaboration. So there are robots called cobots, uh, collaboration robots. And we talk about how, when, how we can blend in ethics about using artificial intelligence in the future. We don't want a robot later hitting you or anything like that. So we break down the topics about what's the safety concerns with robots will come up in the future. I want to power up these systems. So this is still, still bridging where I'm coming about cutting edge solutions and how we're going to power up these systems. And um, you know, we talk about manufacturing sites, starting plants, because I vision that I will implement some robotic solutions as well, because I do teach in that, in that field with my company back home in Botswana. Also bring on another researcher's name as well as Pranesh Kateken. Um, he's from India. So he's found a case study from his home country in Tamil Nadu, uh, which is south of India, is that we can power up actually cities with landfill waste. So uh, the amount of landfill waste we produce every year is about two billion tons a year. That's like basically New Zealand. Imagine a, a whole bit of waste like New Zealand, that's a whole country. If we instead could turn a whole country of waste into a way of powering up your cities, uh, we can then become more efficient because what one of the stable development goals is number 11, um, which is uh, smart cities, stable cities. So if we can, because all the industrial process, we have to firm that and accept that there will be waste, but how, what if we turn this byproducts of waste into something powerful and very useful? And that's why that brings the secular economy of a sustainable life. As I said, um, I'm in a lot of entrepreneurship as well, but as I said, a lot of people look at net present value, MPVs, no one will invest into your business, that's gonna fail. So that you don't install solar panels for the sake of setting solar panels. The reason why we don't see rows and rows of solar panels is because in the past before, uh, they didn't make sense economically to install them. But now we know that, uh, that's why in the first episode we look at the innovation of future solar panels or how they could work. 
I bring on a consultant. He, she's, he's like a consultant in business. He's actually helping me to seal up my business as well uh, to set up here in the UK and set up as well uh, more countries in Africa. His name is Carsten Thiago, and he runs a consultancy firm called Hopewell. And we, we talk about how, how if we ignore sustainability um, and strategy, that could kill off your business. And also, also doing, talk about personal habits that could make you better as an entrepreneur, because uh, that's still the hard work I'm doing. And an example case is uh, one of my mentors is uh, Dr. Adriano Randi. So he's, um, he started off his um, research and um, work life in Brazil. He's from Brazil. Uh, and he was sparked up by the idea by seeing, he worked for a biodiesel company. And, but he could see at night, every single night, the company was spilling all their waste into the river. So that for him was like, okay, we're creating diesel. We're creating all the fossil fuels that we require, but we're harming our planet at the same time. So he was on a mission like, no, I gotta, I gotta make a difference in this Wall Street. Then he went to America. I went to America, did his specialty in photovoltaics, and then he just came to the, to the UK, and then was able to keep on pitching work on his idea. He first got a, a grant for 35,000 pounds, which is the Innovate UK called iCure, which is, um, uh, innovation, criminalization of university research excellence to travel around the world to go speak with people because when you have a value proposition, you never know like if your business is going to work unless you talk to investors, talk to our people who know what issue they're trying to solve. So that was the first 5,000 pounds he won. He won 5,000 pounds from uh, the Royal Academy of Engineering to develop his idea further. And then recently he's won a grant as well for 200,000 pounds keep on scaling up his business. Me and him work in the same incubator space that LAPRA has for businesses that run here. And it's won about over 500,000 pounds. And he's about to run, uh, win, raise another 700,000 pounds for his business. And because if you invest into research, we can make a global impact. So that's the bet that has quite won. And I think, to be honest, if you guys, this is preview information, this is the next billion dollar market, in my opinion. So, how to get involved in uh, Sustainably Smart Talks. Um, can you please watch, share, and join conversation with student guests? As in that, if you, you don't have to be, so far the guests I brought up have been high level academics, but I've also brought on business consultants. So our promise is to bring academic leads, industry leads, and people passionate about sustainability onto the platform. So just send me a message and then, yeah, we can, I can always get, get you on the platform. I have the studio, I have access to it. So every story told uh, shapes the world we build because we learn things better by conversation, of course. And I, I have a challenge for you as a student as well to think bigger, uh, to bridge your studies with global sustainability. And um, I've left um, a QR code there for you guys to scan. It takes you to our YouTube page. Uh, take us to our YouTube page. If you could engage, share with people. Uh, yeah, engage and share with people. Leave some comments. Uh, Tell us about suggestions, how we can improve the quality of the show. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll have this episode, as, this uh, session as well as episode 11. Thank you.